What's going on Raider Nation? It's your boy Sanji back at it with another video. In today's video, I want to discuss some potential trade options that the Raiders could explore. These are guys that are pretty much at the time in their careers where they can move on from the current team. There's some guys that have been already rumored to be traded. Uh, at the same time, I kind of want to give you guys some guys that I think the Raiders should potentially move on. Guys that they have on their team. Let's just jump right into it, man. The first thing I think the Raiders should explore, in my opinion, is probably the biggest position of need for the Raiders, and that's offensive tackle. I believe the Raiders are at a point where, although Brandon Parker has done good against the last two teams, the Denver Broncos, as well as the Philadelphia Eagles, that's you know different than when he's going to have to take on a guy like Cleo Mack at a full time, you know, 50, 60 snaps a game. At the same time, you have other guys that he will play. Chase Young's going to line up over him, at, you know, in, in a couple of weeks. Maybe it's Michael Parsons. Uh, maybe it's some other pass rushers in this league. Uh, Brandon Parker, in my opinion, should be a player the Raiders should explore to upgrade. And I think one guy that can make a lot of sense is offensive tackle of the Philadelphia Eagles, Andre Dillard. If you guys don't know Dillard's story, he was just drafted a couple seasons back. He came from Washington State. One of the top tackles in the draft and the Eagles did him no justice. Uh, they kind of moved him all over the place. They already had a tackle, so I don't really know why they went out and drafted a tackle. Uh, they had Lane Johnson and then um, Jordan Malata ended up getting the left tackle position and that's who they've rolled with ever since. Uh, Andre Dill Dillard has kind of been an afterthought for the Philadelphia Eagles and he could be looking for a new home and if there's any coach in the league that knows how to train an offensive tackle, how to get it right with young offensive players, Tom Cable's that guy. I really think Dillard could be a huge upgrade for the Raiders and at the very least, if Andre Dillard does not start, he isn't going to cost a ton to bring in. Uh, you can always rework his contract. Uh, he's not going to cost a ton to bring in and at the very least he could be a really good depth player a guy who could potentially come in if something were to happen to either colton miller or brian parker remember colton miller did miss a game last year and i'm not saying that uh, that's what's likely going to happen colton miller's been very 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 consistent but you never know at this point we only have jermaine luminor as our, our tackle that we can really trust i think the raiders need to be smart with this uh, and potentially go out and get another offensive tackle now there's other guys out there that they can potentially target as well uh, that could potentially be traded uh, cam robinson from the from the jacksonville jaguars is another guy he's you know he's one of the top tier offensive tackles uh, but the jaguars aren't that good so he could be a guy that could be moved for those purposes another guy that comes to mind is right tackle mike mcglinchey of the san francisco 49ers really never worked out with him but he is a run first offensive tackle most people wanted him over Colton Miller, and most people were upset when the Raiders ended up getting Colton Miller instead of Michael Glenchy. Remember the situation back uh, back then when it happened? The Raiders had the 10th pick, the Niners had the 9th pick, and that happened because of a coin flip that the San Francisco 49ers ended up winning. So the Niners won the coin flip, they got the pick ahead of the Raiders, and they took the offense tackle that the Raiders wanted. Uh, rumors are but the Raiders wanted Mike McGlinchey. I believe it was Vic Tate from The Athletic that reported that. But with that, the Raiders ended up trading back to the 15th pick, and then that's when they took Colton Miller. Uh, either way, it looks like it's worked out for the Raiders, but I do think the Raiders have to upgrade that depth, and those are three offense tackles the Raiders can, can definitely pursue. Uh, jumping forward, I think another position that the Raiders can target is edge defender. And I know the Raiders have gotten a ton of pass rushing productive out of Max and Yannick Gakwe. Even Carl Nassib has came in and Cleveland Farrell has, has been okay. But uh, really, all of our, our pressure has come from Max and Yannick. And honestly, injuries could happen at any point. And if an injury were to happen to one of those guys, do we have the faith that someone like Carl Nassib or Cleveland Farrell can start full time and we will continue to get that production? So I want you guys to think about the triple the triple effect of what would happen if one of our defense spins went down. If one of either Max or Yannick went down, what would happen to the edge, to the pass rush, to the defense in general? Our defense is able to get home with just four guys. And if we lose Max or, or Yannick, what would potentially happen, right? So there's a lot to consider there. Uh, but I think Melvin Ingram of the Pittsburgh Steelers would be a great option for the Raiders. As you guys remember, Melvin Ingram 
did or, or was interested in coming to the Raiders potentially. He's a former Gus Bradley guy. It was something that might have happened earlier in the offseason. Um, and it ended up not happening. I shouldn't say earlier in the offseason. It was kind of late in the offseason process. He ended up going to the Steelers. And he's, he's had some success, man. He has a couple of sacks. He has a couple of pressures. Uh, when healthy, he's still a really good football player. Uh, former Gus guy. But the Pittsburgh Steelers aren't very good. And Melvin Ingram wanted to go to a competing team, a team he could potentially win a Super Bowl with. And let's face it, that's not the Steelers. But it could be the Raiders. So that could potentially happen. The trade deadline's right around the corner. Uh, I, I would love to have Melvin Ingram. Now, I, I will say this. If you bring in Melvin Ingram, that means you might have to get rid of Carl Nassib or Cleveland Farrell. And we'll get into that a little bit later on when I give you guys some guys that I think the Raiders should potentially move on from. Jumping forward, another position, and this one is more so a position of need, uh, and more so maybe not position of need, but there's a certain part of that position that the Raiders have to upgrade, and that's their defensive tackles, specifically their run defense, run defenders. Uh, a guy that's kind of been rumored to potentially be traded is, is Atlanta Falcons' Grady Jarrett. Now, Grady Jarrett is more of a pass rushing defensive tackle, but if he came to the Raiders, not only would he be our best pass rusher, but he would pro probably be our second best run defender from the defensive tackles, right? Right after Jonathan Hankins, it, it would be Grady Jarrett. And he, he might even be better than Jonathan Hankins. He, he does things differently. He's not a guy that's going to take on a double team. But he, he him, similar to Aaron Donald, is a guy that'll slip past a guy. He'll swim over a guy. He'll, you know, he'll left and then come back to his right and just get past the guy and blow a run up that way. Again, it's different than the type of defense tackles we have now. It's different than Jonathan Hankins. Jonathan Hankins, a space eater. Right? He's going to take those double teams on. Grady Jarrett's different, and he can continue to provide us some, some pass rushing. 26 and a half sacks in seven years. The guy's no joke, man. He's a really good football player. I believe he's a former pro bowler or a former all pro. The guy knows how to play football. And he's with the Atlanta Falcons, who have two wins this year. It might be time for him to move on from his team as well. If he isn't the only guy the Raiders explore at that defensive tackle position, another guy they could potentially explore is Michael Brockers. Uh, this is something that a couple of Raiders content creators have put videos out there on. I believe it was reported by Raider Scout on Instagram that the Raiders are either interested or they did trade from him. It was one or the other. Um, it obviously hasn't happened or hasn't been officially confirmed. Um, I believe it will not happen. And here's why I don't think it's going to happen. Um, Michael Brocker has just signed a three-year, $24 million contract with the Detroit Lions. So this year, the Lions already have, they've already given him his guaranteed money. Uh, and they've prorated that cap over the next three years, the guaranteed portion. So this year, they've guaranteed him $11 million. So if the Lions were to move on from him, they're already on the hook for $11 million. Now for this year, it may not matter, but if you look at the next two years, both 2022 and 2023, uh, they're on the hook for $10 million, uh, basically 7.9 million next season, and then 2 million in two seasons. You're not going to want to eat that dead cap. You'd rather stick it out with a guy like Michael Brockers, at least for the first two years of his contract. And it doesn't make sense for them to move on uh, from him right the lions are rebuilding yes but they still need good players and michael brockers kind of brings that for them either way if the raiders do go out and trade a second defense tackle like michael brockers could make a ton of sense in my opinion now jumping forward to the last position that i think the raiders could target and this is a little bit more so to just kind of see where the Josh Jacobs injury is at. Now, I've heard some people say it, it's, it could be a major injury, uh, as in he'll miss three to four weeks potentially. Um, but either way, I, I think the Raiders could explore going out and getting another running back. It's a running back who wants no, who no longer wants to be with the team he's on, and that's running back Marlon Mack of the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, Marlon Mack, in my opinion, is still a good running back. He's a young running back. Uh, and he does a lot of good things in my opinion he knows how to pass block he knows how to uh come out of the backfield he knows how to run through the tackles rather it's power or zone the guy does a lot of good things and i think that could be a really solid target for the las vegas raiders now obviously a lot of that will de depend on the health of josh jacobs is josh jacobs healthy 
if he's going to miss three, four, five games, I think we should potentially go get another running back. I don't think Kenny and Drake can handle that workload. I believe a guy like Marlon Mack might make some sense, and you can probably get him for a sixth or seventh round pick. Like, I don't think he would go for that much money. Now, there's a couple other running backs out there that could potentially be traded. Uh, as you guys know, uh, Mark Ingram was just traded yesterday. There's some other running backs out there that are also looking for a new home. So the Raiders can definitely go out and get some guys. There's a lot of guys out there. Uh, now, I will say this. Although those are some of the guys I think the Raiders should target, those are some of the positions we should go after, there are some guys the Raiders have that they can think about moving on from. Guys that, let's face it, have not lived up to where they were drafted. But we'll start it off with probably the biggest name of them all, and that's Cleveland Farrell. Cleveland Farrell is in his third year, and he has not taken the step that you expect out of a third-year player. Cleveland Farrell, in my opinion, had all the potential to be a really solid football player. He was great against the run coming in. He was smart, high football IQ. He's bigger, more powerful than most offensive linemen, but he was never able to put it together. And then this offseason, he kind of got benched, and we realized that he was going to be our third string defensive end, but that's changed. He's not the third string anymore. Cleveland Farrell is now the fourth string defensive end because Carl Nassim gets more playing time than Cleveland Farrell. At the end of the day, the Raiders took Farrell with the fourth overall pick and the Raiders don't utilize him. They don't put him in the game and you can blame some of that on Farrell himself because he hasn't lived up and he hasn't been able to develop a pass rush. But I do think Cleveland Farrell, when he does go to a new team, will be able to turn his career around. I think Cleveland Farrell is going to have a 15 year career in this league maybe that's not going to be for the raiders especially when you consider the fact that max crosby is going to get a, a major contract some other guys will also get some some top tier contracts we're just not going to have the money for clue and feral the club the raiders should explore trading feral this this season before the trade deadline if they feel like he is not part of the long-term future they could potentially still get a third or fourth round pick. Remember, Cleveland Farrell actually has some production, as opposed to a guy like Garyon Conley, who had no production, and the Texans gave us a third round pick for him. Cleveland Farrell still has some value. Maybe it's not for the Raiders, but another team could potentially want a guy like Farrell. Another guy that the Raiders could look to explore, and this is a guy that I would not trade, but they could potentially look for him, and that's our young corner, Damon Arnett. Now, in my opinion, I would not trade Damon Arnett. I think Damon Arnett still has so much potential. Uh, at the same time, when you look at him in certain situations, certain plays, certain schemes, the guy does a great job. But it's just some other times he makes mental mistakes. Now, I know some people will say the Raiders should move on from Damon Arnett, but I think he's still young enough that you want to give him some more opportunities. He hasn't been healthy. Uh, I think Damon Arnett, more so than Cleveland Farrell, has the higher potential right now. Uh, with Cleveland Farrell, we've already seen a ton of him, and he just does not have it, at least not at the moment. Uh, a change of scenery could do that for Farrell, and a change of scenery could also do that for Arnett. I have no doubt in my mind, if Damon Arnett was traded to the New England Patriots, the Baltimore Ravens, the New Orleans Saints, a team that relies on man-to-man -man press coverage, I have no doubt in my mind that Damon Arnett will turn his entire career around i think the reason why he has had, has not had that success is because of the fact that gus bradley runs a cover three zone system and i think that right there has really hindered damon arnett now obviously in my opinion i think the raiders should still consider trading arnett as well especially if you can still get a ton back for him remember he's still in year two he can still have a ton of value uh, obviously, we'll see what the Raiders decide to do with those two guys. A couple other guys that the Raiders could potentially trade, and, and this would be more so if other teams needed these guys. And again, this isn't necessarily saying the Raiders should do it, but the Raiders could potentially trade a guy like Nick Kwiatkowski. Nick Kwiatkowski came into the Raiders last season, no expectations, and he really did a great job. Last year, Kwiatkowski was arguably the Raiders' best defensive player. Not saying much, obviously the talent we had, the defensive scheme we had was terrible. But considering the fact that the Raiders brought in a guy with, like Kukowski and he came in and made huge impactful plays for the Raiders, and then he comes in this year and he doesn't even play. He doesn't even see the field. He's a backup. 
that too he's like a fourth string backup right assuming all our linebackers are actually healthy at this point the raiders could potentially trade him there might be a team willing to take a guy like Kukowski, a guy that could play out in space a guy that can play downhill make the smart plays potentially play some good mid zones uh, Kwiatkowski obviously just didn't work for the Raiders. I believe it's because he doesn't have that speed. Uh, and at the same time, he isn't the best downhill linebacker. And I think Gus Bradley prefers guys that have the speed to cover or guys that have the downhill ability to hit, tackle. Uh, and I don't think he wants guys in between. And I think that's kind of where Nick Kwiatkowski falls. And I believe the Raiders could still trade him and, and potentially get some, some value back for him. I want to know what you guys think, man. There's a lot of players out there that the Raiders could potentially trade for. There's a lot of players that the Raiders could trade themselves, some young players. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Who are some options that you guys would go out there and target or some guys you guys would trade? Make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Smash that subscribe button if you guys are not already subscribed. I really appreciate every single one of you guys. And I'll see you guys next time with another video.